In this short video, I'm going to discuss and explain how to properly troubleshoot a reversing valve of a heat pump that has an internal high side to low side leak. Begin by clicking the start button on the phone. Next, let's go to the thermostat by clicking the thermostat icon at the bottom left of the page. Once at the thermostat, turn the selector dial to the cool position. This will also turn down the temperature setting of the thermostat. Next, we want to take a brief inventory of what electrical loads are operational. Starting at the indoor unit, click the indoor unit icon. If you can't hear the blower motor running, you can always remove the cover and observe the graphic on the indoor blower motor. We can see here that in fact the indoor blower or indoor fan motor is operating. Let's put the cover back on. Now we're going to go out to the outdoor unit and see if the outdoor fan motor and the compressor are running. We can see that the outdoor fan motor is in fact on and it sounds like the compressor is running too. You can always verify compressor operation with a clamp on ammeter if you can't in fact hear it. Next, we want to measure refrigerant pressures in the system. For this activity, we're going to use the digital gauge manifold. The digital gauge manifold will do automatic temperature to pressure conversions and a use of a temperature pressure chart will not be necessary. However, if your preference is to use the analog gauges, the temperature pressure chart is always available here on the right by clicking the right icon. This particular heat pump uses R410A refrigerant. So we're going to attach the two hoses, the red hose to the liquid line service port, and the blue hose to the suction line service port. Let's take a look at what we've got here. If you look at the pressures, the high side pressure is 317 PSIG, which converts to a condensing temperature of only 100 degrees. The condensing temperature under normal operating conditions should be approximately 20 degrees above the outdoor ambient temperature. Let's check the outdoor ambient temperature by taking the digital psychrometer out of the toolbox. And we can see here, if we move the gauges out of the way, that it is in fact 95 degrees outside. So basically what we should have here is a condensing temperature of about 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which would result in a discharge pressure or high side pressure of 391. We're well below that mark. Now, let's store the psychrometer away and take a look at the suction pressure. Our suction pressure is 142 PSIG. With R410A refrigerant, this results in an evaporating temperature of 50 degrees, which is well above where it should be. Normally in the cooling mode, air conditioners and heat pumps operate with an evaporating temperature of approximately 35 to 45 degrees, although this will largely be dependent on the heat load. So what we've got here is a system that is operating with a discharge or high side pressure that is well below normal and a suction pressure or low side pressure that's operating above normal. This may lead some technicians to believe that we've got a faulty compressor. However, although this may be the case, a check of the compressor current will be necessary to determine whether it's in fact a faulty compressor or an internal leak in the reversing valve causing discharge gas to kind of be dumped into the suction of the compressor. Let's take a look. Taking the clamp on ammeter out of the toolbox and opening the cabinet, this compressor under normal operation will operate at about 15 amps. Place the jaws around the glowing hotspot and we can see that we're actually running 17 amps of current. So the current of the compressor is higher than normal. In the event that you had a faulty compressor, the current would be lower than normal. In other words, it would be below 15, which is again the rated amperage for this compressor. This tells us that we have a high side to low side leak within the reversing valve. I'm going to store these instruments back in the toolbox and show you another way of verifying an internal leak on the four-way reversing valve of the heat pump. Looking at the reversing valve, if you were to measure the temperature of the two suction ports of the reversing valve, 
In other words, this line right here is where the suction gases are entering the valve and the center line at the bottom is referred to as the permanent suction port which is going back to the compressor. We should not have any more than a three degree increase in temperature as this suction gas passes through the body of the valve. Any measured temperature difference across the two suction ports in excess of three degrees Fahrenheit will just simply verify the internal leak. So we may see something like this. On this port here coming into the valve we may measure 53 degrees Fahrenheit. When the suction vapors leave the valve through the permanent suction port back to the compressor maybe we're measuring 63 or even higher. This indicates at least a 10 degree pickup in temperature as the suction vapors pass through the valve. This is the result of discharge gas coming into the top port leaking through the valve body and into the suction port. This is a fairly common problem on many reversing valves, particularly ones that have not been installed properly. Anytime you're installing or replacing a reversing valve, it is extremely important to heat sink the valve so that you prevent damage to it when you're brazing it in. In addition, it's also very important to purge with nitrogen while you're brazing. This will prevent copper oxides from plugging up the pilot tubing in the valve and causing it to not shift fully one way or another. Don't forget to use the troubleshooting flowcharts if you get stuck. Click on the top left tab and the flowcharts will guide you through the problem step by step. Our next step is to replace the reversing valve. Prior to doing this we need to turn the disconnect off. Next, click on the reversing valve to replace it. The repair summary states this will cost $205 and we're going to proceed. Here we can see this in fact corrected the problem. Replace all caps and covers on the unit, turn the power back on, and before we clean the work area, let's take a check of the pressures and amperage now and see if they've returned to normal. Take the digital gauge manifold out of the toolbox, place the red hose on the liquid line service port, and the blue hose on the suction service port. As we can see now, our condensing temperature of 115 degrees from the 391 PSIG corresponds to a temperature 20 degrees above ambient, which is normal. Our suction pressure of 118 PSIG results in an evaporating temperature of 40 degrees. This is also a normal operating condition. Last but not least, let's store the gauges away and check the compressor amperage. Placing the jaws of the clamp on around the glowing hotspot, we can see that our amperage is now operating normally at 15 amps. So the problem's been corrected. Put the clamp on ammeter away, close and replace all covers, and don't forget, return to the indoors and click on the broom to clean the work area. Good luck.